I want my money back. That was a freaking scam. Right here in my hands, I have $5,000. Each of these, 2,500 bucks, industry pass. Um, I can use my Clever wallet to accept my money back in Bitcoin. I'll take it. Uh, you know what, let me just, let me just start off uh, <clears throat> with one of the biggest things, the, the ticket prices. Um, so at the very end, I believe general admission was $1,000 per ticket. Industry pass was $2,500 per ticket. Whale pass was $21,000 per ticket. That can buy you a pretty decent car. Um, but then again, if you have that kind of money to spend, you're probably already driving a really nice car, so it's fine. Um, but let me just say this. It, it, it feels like a money grab. It feels like a ripoff. It feels like a scam. The experience that I'm taking away from it was not worth paying $5,000 to be there. It wasn't. I have experience going to trade shows. If you guys haven't heard of the IMTS trade show, it's basically the biggest um, manufacturing, machining, engineering trade show you could ever attend. It's the biggest in the world. Um, you know, fills up the McCormick Place here in Chicago. Those tickets are maybe fifty dollars, maybe fifty dollars. Um, you know, the industry leaders want everyone to be a part of this. They want the industry to grow. So they're shelling out all this money to make tickets access accessible to everyone who wants to be in the industry. Um, however, here, you know, we want Bitcoin, we want crypto to be the, the future currency. We want this, we want that. Why are we not making it so that everyone can be involved and everyone can be included and come learn about it? There's just no reason that the lowest price ticket should be a thousand dollars. Who can spend, you know, what normal person could spend a thousand dollars on a ticket? That's, I mean, I don't know. It's outrageous to me. The ticket prices need to be reduced drastically. You know, if we want everyone to be involved in Bitcoin and crypto and we want this to be, you know, the future of money, we need everyone to be involved, not just these few people over here. It's not gonna work like that. Um, <clears throat> just a thought. I'm gonna go ahead here in chronological order and just, I literally on my whole flight back to Chicago, I came up with a list of shit that just pissed me way the F off. And you know, what could be better for next year? I, you know, a three hour flight, I my mind was rolling. Um, so I already touched on ticket prices. Now, that's, you know, before the entire event, you bought your ticket. Uh, getting to the event. So on the first day, industry day, uh, we got there. So gates were supposed to open at 8 o'clock. Um, we got there at like 7 or 7.30 because if you've seen any of the Bitcoin videos in the past, the lines are 100 miles long and I'd rather not wait in that line. Uh, so we got there early. We were still standing in line in the line at like 8.30 or 8.45, uh, just kind of waiting. And secondly, we weren't even sure if we were in the right line. There was people that shuffled us this way because this is the pass we had. And then kind of next to us was like the whale pass. But when you look over, there were people with purple, purple wristbands, industry passes. So it was like, okay, well, they're not even forcing uh, whale pass perks so for you know for a whale pass holder what's the point of having a whale pass if you know we can get into your tier they're not enforcing anything but anyway <clears throat> so we're still waiting outside at 8 30 8 45 you know kind of like what the hell is going on the line's not moving there's just a bunch of staff running around and confusing people and telling people to go all these other places um and then finally some guy says oh you know sorry security was late and now we can get in so now because of security being late, um, the rest of the day was delayed because the speakers couldn't really start on time. So that was annoying. Um, but going through security, you go through the metal detector thing and then they do a bag check. Um, but all they did for me, for the, I literally just unzipped a small purse and no, they just kind of like, all right, you're good. Didn't even look at my bag. 
which to some people that might not bother some people but for me who else's bag are you also not looking in um and and what's the point of having a bag check if you're not actually going to be checking bags just i don't know didn't didn't really make sense to me so yeah um so since we didn't get in the building on time the event started late and I don't know if they would have updated it in the app that they had you download, but I didn't want to download an app for four days. It just came, seemed, I don't know, like pointless for me. Um, but yeah, I paid $2,500 a pass and didn't even really get to see the speakers I wanted to speak because there was no updated schedule, which was annoying. I believe uh, general admission was not supposed to have access to industry day. At least that's how I interpreted it. Uh, but I saw a shit ton of general admission passes all throughout the, you know, in all the, con in all the different speakers and, you know, just everywhere. So they were, they were in there, um, which if you're in a general admission ticket holder, no shade to you. I'm just saying that was the perk of buying the industry pass was so that there were less people and you could, you know, sit closer to the speakers and have, you know, just a better experience. Um, so there's that. In addition to being delayed on the first day, I also noticed that there was only one big electronic map of, you know, the, where the different stages were, um, which was, you know, it's fine, but it's such a big place. If you hadn't studied it before or seen a map beforehand, like how are you supposed to know where you're supposed to go? Um, so obviously you walk in, you see the Bitcoin store, you see the Nakamoto stage, you can, go over to the left and you see, you know, the mining stage and the expo hall and all that's all fine and dandy and you figured it out. But let me tell you, it took me a, a freaking minute to figure out where the Genesis stage was, uh, which was not cool. Another thing that was annoying inside the event, the food and beverage vendors that were in there were just so inconsistent with one another. Um, you know, like, one of them, I was trying to get just a can of beer and the guy started pouring it into a cup and I said, no, I, that's not what I want. I just want the can of beer. And he was like, well, I have to give it to you like this. That's our rules. Um, and then you go sit down to listen to a speaker and there's a guy with a freaking can of beer. So I was like, okay, well, I guess it's not your rules. It's just your rules or someone else wasn't following the rules. I don't know. Um, but it was annoying. Uh, you know, some of them won't print you out receipts. Some of them just can't print you out receipts. Some of them don't accept cash. It would just, you know, it just was so many different rules. Like going up to each new one was like a different set of, hey, we can do this. No, we can't do that. Um, so that was really, really kind of annoying. Um, all right, let's get into a good one here. The wristbands, um, they suck. They're awful. These are the worst wristbands I've ever worn in my life. I don't know why they would expect people to want to wear these for three days. I know that some people did keep them on all three days. Kudos to you, but I just couldn't do it. Um, you know, how, how is the, how am I supposed to know if the RF thing is going to be okay if I go in the ocean or go swimming or, you know, whatever, how do I know it doesn't get ruined? Um, and you know, if you're going out to a nice dinner, the last thing you want is this dangling on the back of your wrist. Um, and thirdly, you don't want to be profiled. If you're a whale pass holder and you're going out with, you know, a blue ticket on your wrist that costs $21,000, which might not be most people's general knowledge, but to some of us it is, you know, the last thing you want is someone to rob you because, Hey, you have $21,000 on your wrist. I can't imagine what else you have in your bank account or in your wallet. Um, so yeah, that sucked. And another thing too, I have an actual screenshot here on my phone of the Bitcoin conference saying <clears throat> this here. Basically, this wristband is your ticket back in. You don't have to bring your original QR code tickets that you brought on the first day. You don't have to show the ticket on your phone. You just have to bring your wristband back in and that is your ticket back in. We will replace it. We'll give you a new one. That worked out the first day or two that I went back in uh, with just this, they let me in right away. Um, <clears throat> on the last day, on the Sound Money event day, they shuffled you into another line and they were like, oh, we need your ID and we need your uh, QR code, your tickets. And let me preface that by saying, A, it's the last day. I've been getting in just fine, like the website says I should have. Um, and B, 
I left my bag at home with my QR codes in it because there's a bag outside that I, or there's a bag, there's a sign outside that I passed earlier in the day that said no bags. So why would I bring a bag if I get there and you're gonna have to send me back to put my bag back at the hotel, you know, waste of time. So I'm just not gonna bring my bag. I'm just gonna bring my, my wristband and my phone and my money and that's it. That's what I did. So, so yeah, so they shuffle us over to this other line and they're like, all right, you know, IDs and let's see your, your wristband and let's see your QR code. And we were like, well, wait a minute, you know, I purposely didn't bring my QR codes cause you're sign out there. I keep calling them QR codes. I purposely didn't bring my tickets because of the sign out there. And what if I didn't have my ID because I wasn't going to be buying alcohol or whatever, you know, obviously I always carry my ID, but what if I didn't have it? What if I left it back at the hotel? So that was a major annoyance. And all they would say was, well, that's our policy. That's our policy. No, your policy states, this is my ticket back in. I should be able to give you this and you give me a new one and we're good to go. And they were saying, well, we don't know if someone stole it. We don't know if that, and it literally says, if you cut it off, bring it back, we'll get you a new one. No need for your tickets, no need for your ID. It was just, they made such a big deal about it. I said, you know, I paid $5,000 to be here and you're sitting here calling me a liar, asking me to validate my ID when this has been working fine the last couple of days. And you know, they're like, no, 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 no. You know, we're not calling you a liar. That's just our policy. And it's not your policy. That's not what was said. I have an actual screenshot that shows exactly what I just said. So that's a load of shit. And you know, another thing is, is on the first day when we went to have our, when we gave them our tickets, they weren't asking to see our IDs. They didn't ask for my ID. How did they knew, how did they know that I was who I said I was? Uh, you know, like just make it make sense. It's all so inconsistent. I don't know if the staff was um, Bitcoin Magazine staff or, or the convention staff, but regardless, they needed to be briefed better because we were not the only people in that line who were like, what the frick is this? Like, like people just like us who had been getting in just fine the other days before. People just like us who did not have their original tickets with them. You know, just like, it just makes no sense. Um, so that was a huge annoyance, a huge waste of my time. Um, it like that experience in itself was enough to aside from the cost of the tickets aside from everything else that was ridiculous that experience and that encounter enough with the manager there was enough for me to not want to go back the next year uh, i mean what a fucking shit show seriously it, it just it sets me off but long story short um it feels like it was just a waste of time and money to be honest with you if you're thinking about going next year and you know, it's gonna be an issue for you to save up that much money to go, go somewhere else or invest it seriously because it, you're, I didn't get shit out of it. Um, and granted, you, those prices were lower before and then they upped them you know, towards the end. There was like the early bird special or whatever. But at the end of the day, the tickets are $1,000, $2,500 and $21,000. That's ridiculous. Um, you know, staff was very poorly trained. None of the managers would stand by the word of what the website said. Um, security was pretty poor as well. It didn't even check in my bag. Um, things were not very clearly marked out for the event. And oh, another thing. So Industry Pass, I believe, was supposed to have their own special area for the Sound Money Festival, like uh, at the actual concert part. Couldn't find it. That's another Industry Pass holder. He couldn't find it. So that was annoying. Um, and in terms of seating for all events that I witnessed, whether it was the comedy show, whether it was at the Nakamoto stage, you know, anywhere, anywhere that was a designated like whale pass, like, you know, had a sign up that said whale pass seating. There were, everyone else was sitting there. So that was, you know, just weird. I don't know. It was just, it was poorly run and it was a waste of my time and waste of my money. I might go again next year to see if I can't change my mind about it, but I'm not hopeful at all. Um, just a very poorly planned event, really. I don't know. Maybe I'm one of the few people who has that feeling, but I just, maybe my standards are really high. I don't know, but it was just not, absolutely not worth the money. I mean, no way. You spend $5,000 on tickets. 
you know, luckily only spent about $1,300, $1,500 on a hotel because I booked through that Bitcoin conference website, you know, six, $700 for flights, who knows how much money I spent on food. I mean, this is like a, this is like a, and at least a seven or $8,000 trip. That's a lot of money. I could go on a way better vacation for $7,000 than I did. So I'm just going to leave it with that. If you went to the conference, please comment down below. Let me know about, uh, share with me your thoughts. I'm just curious to think if I'm the only one who feels this way or not, but I'm telling you, like I'm that kind of person. If I order something at a restaurant and a waiter brings me something else, I probably won't even say anything, you know, fine, whatever. But this, this was a big deal for me because that is a lot of money to spend for sh such a, a shitty, poorly planned out experience. Um, so those are my thoughts. Again, Bitcoin conference, you can refund me to my clever wallet, uh, in Bitcoin. That'd be cool. Um, other than that, you need to lower your prices cause that's just like out of this world.